Hi guys, how you doing? I hope you guys are doing good because I'm doing great. So here are some advice that are quite popular. People give this advice all the time, but they are kind of useless to me, okay? In fact, I consider them to be generally useless advice, but in particular to me and my situation, I find them quite useless, okay? So let's just dive right into it. So the first one is, and I'm sure many of you have heard this advice over and over again, and that is breakfast is the most important meal of the day we hear it all the times doctors say this parents say this everybody and their grandma agree that it is true but to me it's kind of useless advice it doesn't work for me anytime i have breakfast i actually slow down okay they say breakfast gives you energy blah 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 blah, blah. no for me it's the opposite anytime i have breakfast i you know tend to slow down i tend to get lazier i tend to want to just rest instead of you know go about my duties and um, people say oh it's good for you to have breakfast so that you don't get hungry easily and you know you can have energy to do your tasks but for me whenever i have breakfast i get hungry easily <laughs> so for instance on a normal day i can have my first meal of the day like around one two PM and I'll be fine but once I wake up in the morning and let's say around 8 for some reason I decide to have breakfast by 11 o'clock I'm already hungry I'm already tired I'm already feeling you know like oh, when am I going to eat next okay I don't know if it works a lot for everybody maybe I have a condition that is making it that way and I'm saying that considering that I'm overweight okay so most people who are overweight have an insulin issue which makes them get hungry faster blah 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 but I'm just saying for me and my particular self okay having breakfast in the morning is counter productive for me it makes me slow down it makes me tired it makes me want to sleep what works for me is intermittent fasting where i break my fast around 1 2 p.m and if i'm trying to lose weight i try to you know push that breakfast breakfast i try to push it to three four and then i have maybe one meal or two meals and then before seven i'm done and i go to bed the next one is jack of all trade master of none okay i've heard this all my life you know don't be a jack of all trades you know try and master something try and be good at something follow your passion discover what your passion is discover what your life purpose is blah 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 blah, blah. and Hi, my name is Adeze, if you're new to this channel, and I am the typical jack of all trades. Like, I can't really point out one thing and say, this is what I am an expert, expert in. I am more like jack of all trades. Like, I like to dabble into so many things, and I'm quite good at so many things, okay? I'm not an expert, you know, I don't have, you know, professionalism in anything per se, but I'm a jack of all trades, and it works for me, okay? I am done trying to streamline things. I'm not streamlining anything anymore. I am just going to work on anything or put my hands to anything or try to learn anything I feel like learning, okay? We are not all the same. Not everybody can be a master of one, okay? Not everybody can do that. For some of us, that spells a lifetime of boredom. The idea of focusing on one thing and doing it over and over and over again, it scares me. Like, I feel like I'm going to lose my mind doing it, okay? I can't focus on one thing over and over again. It is not just my disposition. It's just not my makeup as a person. Like, I have to be doing so many things at the same time. That is why YouTube kind of works for me because I can show you guys, you know, how to make chin chin today. Tomorrow, I can sit down and talk about finance. Next, tomorrow, I can show you guys how to, you know, create your home garden or how to grow plantain or something, you know? That is what gives me joy, doing several different things at the, at the same time or, you know, doing several different things basically gives me joy just leave it for us okay those of us that are jack of all trades leave it all, leave it for us and i heard somewhere that the, the full saying is jack of all trades master of none but it's still better than a master of one or something like that i can't remember now the third advice oh my god i have heard this all the time maybe i have even said this in the past maybe i even still say it to today i don't know but you see this talk of be yourself it just doesn't make so much sense to me okay i don't know i say it though i say it and i know in cases where i say it and it makes sense right but generally that advice is trash okay <laughs> we are not all ourselves i don't care how real you think you are i don't care how you know true to yourself you think you are we are not all ourselves, okay? To an extent, we are all trying to create a version of ourselves that is more socially acceptable, that is more palatable, okay, with what is generally accepted by the society, okay? That is what it is. If you see people that are truly being themselves, a lot of them 
have mental issues. I'm sorry to say, a lot of them have mental issues. Okay, so yeah, what I mean, what I mean is this, right? At the risk of sounding, you know, judgmental or whatever, so you can only be yourself to the extent that it is generally acceptable, right? By the society, I mean, for you to make positive impact in your life and the lives of others. So, for instance, my typical self is to lie down and sleep and enjoy my sleep. That is me being myself. I'm not here for socialization. I don't feel like going out and laughing with everybody. Like I, my my normal default setting is to wake up. In fact, my kid self is even a, 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 a stretch. Like talking with my kids is even a stretch. Okay. So my normal default, if I wanted to be myself, I'll wake up in the morning. I lie down on the bed. I'll order food. Somebody will bring food to my bed. I lie down on my bed and just sleep and watch series and watch movies. I won't even, I won't even be here making this video because even though I like making videos. For today like right now i'm on my period and i want to just relax and sleep okay so if i were to be myself that is not going to work for my own good for the good of my career for the good of my family for the good of my friends it's not going to work so i have to you know try to do things that are not are not necessarily be myself for instance when i go out to socialize when i call people when i visit people when i you know talk to people when i interact with people more than normal it helps me in my career it helps me you know with my friendships and relationships and you know life in general it helps me but that's not me being myself okay so does that make sense so when people say be yourself i'm like what do we really mean by be yourself right if you have a bad habit that you need to change then you change it if you have a bad you know personality something that is natural to you but you know we all know that it's not good then change it i feel like when people tell people be yourself they are saying it because that version of yourself that they think you are going to be is acceptable to them but if you decide to be yourself in a way that's going to hurt them or harm them or you know not be acceptable by them they'll not be like no you need to change anyway you guys get the point but always try to improve on yourself and be a better person it, it, it helps the society that way for us to all be better or present ourselves as better people okay in your closet behind closed doors you can be yourself very well nobody cares okay nobody cares but when it comes to career business interacting with others you know social life please don't be yourself if you have you know crass behavior okay and the next one which is basically tied to the other one it is when people say things like don't care what other people think do what you want to do don't care what other people think you know things like that people say do whatever makes you happy yes that's it okay do whatever makes you happy and i get where they're coming from again like i said i'm sure i have given people that same advice and i'm going to still give people that same advice in certain scenarios but as a general blank statement it does not make any sense okay when people say as long as it makes you happy do you know that killing makes some people happy do you know that murdering do you know that a lot of crimes make people happy but we're not going to allow them to do it because <laughs> what makes you happy does not make me happy. What makes you happy generally is a detriment to other people in the society. So that idea that as long as they are happy, they can do whatever they want, that idea does not hold water in the real sense of things, okay? It does not make sense for us to tell people as long as it makes you happy. No, as long as it makes sense, as long as it is good, as long as it is legal, as long as it is socially acceptable, as long as it is, you know, as long as it is good, basically, I think I, I use good more as a marker for what I should do and what I should not do. What I want to do, is it good? Is it going to make other people happy? Is it going to generally impact my society for good, okay? Not necessarily make other people happy, but is it a net, a, a, a net good? If by the time you remove all the extra, extra, does it make sense for this action, for me to, you know, do this or for, for this action to take place? yes it does and i go ahead with it okay but saying that as long as it makes you happy or even people that say things like you can't tell other people what to do with their children no we can't tell other people what to do with their children okay we definitely do tell other people what to do with their children okay <laughs> because that advice is very dangerous right to say we can't tell other people what to do with their children so i'll see a woman on the internet bleaching her child's skin you know, the child will have bones all over her skin, making her child's hair very tight that all the edges have pulled. And as she just applauded and say, your daughter is beautiful. Just, just, just compliment the person and move on. No, I'm going to say it. If I need to say it, especially when it concerns children, I'm going to talk, okay? Here, I get a lot of unsolicited advice about my kids. 
uh, all the time here. When I see such advice, if I want to take it, I take it. If I don't want to take it, I ignore it and move on. But I will not say that nobody has the right to tell me what to do with my children. No, please. As a society, we all have the right to tell people what to do with their children. Now, we're not going to force them to do it, but we have the right to tell them and advise them and, you know, reprimand them if there's something wrong. It's like me walking on the street now and seeing a woman leave her child on the road, walking and crossing the road anyhow. I'll now be like, it's not my place to tell her what to do with her child. <laughs> Are we joking here? So yeah, my point is, all that advice of as long as it makes people happy or nobody has the right to tell people what to do with their lives is a lie. We all do it every day, but I think what happens with society generally is that when somebody is doing something that you agree with, we tell other people, you have no right to tell them what to do with their lives. But when somebody is doing something we don't agree with, then we tell other people, you know, well, we even bash them ourselves. So make it make sense. Okay. Now the next one, I should have said this before actually, the next one is eat small meals throughout the day for you to lose weight. Like instead of you to eat one big meal, try and eat small meals at maybe four, four hours a day, or you know, just try and eat smaller meals throughout the day. I'm sure most of us have heard this advice. I'm sure we've been told this over and over again. If you've been trying to lose weight in the past, I'm sure you've come across this advice in several different ways, in several different places, from several different people. But yeah, I'm sorry to break it to you. That advice is, doesn't make sense, okay? It's useless as far as I'm concerned. To me, it do, if you're not a child, if you're not a toddler, if you're not a baby, <laughs> that advice does not hold water, okay? In fact, eating three times a day is actually too much. For an adult okay eating three times a day is stretching it okay and this is coming from somebody who is overweight so i know eating three times a day is stretching it okay two meals a day is okay for an, an adult eating two meals a day is okay for you and eating that two meals in a short window is better for you okay i'm not saying that you cannot eat three meals a day or you cannot eat you know more than three meals a day i'm saying what is best when it comes to you know advising people on how to eat or how they should go about their diet especially people who are overweight telling them eat small meals a day is actually a very um difficult way to lose weight i've tried it in the past several times it never used to work for me because each time i tried it i noticed that first of all i wasn't losing that much weight in fact at some point i wasn't even losing weight anymore then number two, it was a very difficult way to lose weight, okay? It was very difficult because you eat small meals, you still be hungry. You find out that you even get hungry quicker, like what I said with the, you know, eating breakfast stuff. Eating multiple meals a day in small, small quantities is torture, as far as I'm concerned, it's torture. But you see, intermittent fasting, where you don't eat for a long period of time, after a while, one week, two weeks max, your body would have had adjusted. In fact, you have to start reminding yourself to eat. And then the last one, which is basically, I don't know whether I'm calling myself out with this last point, but you see this advice of follow your instincts, okay? Follow your instincts. I've been thinking about it and lately I have realized that that is not exactly good advice, okay? There is an assumption, you know, behind that advice is the assumption that you are perfect like you know everything you you are you are just your instincts are in fact you are supernatural at that point because <laughs> you are a seer okay that following your instinct thing is good advice to an extent okay i'm going to say it's good advice to an extent but there's a lot of caveats that should go with that advice okay so one caveat that should go with that advice is that you really need to be an expert in some fields for you to now follow your instincts in those fields right there are some fields now for instance um what do I, let's say design for instance let's just say being an interior decorator okay i cannot really trust my instincts with some certain design choices if i am not I, i'm not an interior decorator i'm not someone who basically likes interiors normally i'm just someone who I, i'm just giving an example I, it's not really a good example because i like interiors anyway but i'm just saying let's say i'm someone who doesn't really know much about interiors i don't really care about it on a normal day and then i'm designing my own home and then you come and tell me just follow your instincts put the couch anywhere you want it or you feel like it should be just follow your instincts no 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 it's not work that way you're gonna come up with rubbish <laughs> okay you're going to design rubbish right so yeah in some fields that following your instinct sometimes does not really work and again number two sometimes you are wrong that's just it's just a part of life sometimes you are wrong so 
as much as we like to feel like, oh, my spirit told me this, there are times that your spirits have told you things that when you did them, they worked out badly for you. They turned out terrible for you. In fact, colossal failure. But we don't really remember those ones because, you know, they are failures. But when, we, when, they, are, when they apply to things that are successes, you know, we now say, ah, my spirit told me, my instinct is always right. No! Try and remember the times that your instinct told you, do this, say that, go there, uh, you know, call that person and then it ended up being a disaster for you. Okay, date that person. That person, he's a good person. He, he, she's a good person. Be friends with her. And then at the end of the day, the person betrays you in a way that you're like, oh my goodness, why, why, why did that happen? Then you will not be like, ah, my instinct told me not to go there, but I still went. It's a lie. Your instinct not tell you anything. In fact, your instinct told you to go there. That's why you went. But because it has turned badly for you now, you are now trying to, you know, rewrite things in your head and distort things in your head. But it doesn't work like that, okay? So, as much as we we'll say, oh, follow your instincts, please follow, ad follow good advice, okay? Look for good advice and follow them um, you know try and develop your instincts by studying things more by learning more about things by questioning things I'm going to do a video about questioning things because <laughs> people be moving different these days I realized that a lot of people do not question things and it was a series that I watched that was like mind-blowing to me but anyway question things question yourself okay question yourself don't assume that you are perfect and you have the perfect instinct it it can push you into you know doing the wrong thing okay so question yourself if I would say where I would say follow your instincts is with sometimes safety right and even with safety it is still not that straightforward because sometimes your instinct told you to go there and then you went there and something bad happened to you there okay so even with that i would say be careful but i think that for the most part generally if you're someone that is intuitive so i don't even know what intuitive means at this point because i think most of us think that we are intuitive but if you are someone that you know listens or you're someone that has the Holy Spirit, let me put it that way. You're someone that has the Holy Spirit, but I don't want to make it so much about the Holy Spirit because some people watching me might not get it, right? In terms of things like safety, I think you can rely on your instincts, you know, a little more than normal because I feel like in us, there's this self-preservative... For some people, it's not everybody that has it, but for many, because a lot of men don't have it. <laughs> a lot of men do some things I'm just like, how could you be so stupid? Anyway, if you notice that things are looking different, just ignore it, okay? Let's just go back to what we're talking about, okay? I feel like when it comes to self-preservation, we all have that instinct in us to try and preserve ourselves first, okay? That flight or fright um, hormone, or what they call it, I forgot what they call it anyway. Let me not go too much into technicality. So yeah, I think that it is okay to advise people to follow their instincts in, you know, such cases, especially in cases of safety. To an extent though, because again, toddlers and children, a lot of men and some women do not have that instinct, okay? Another aspect where you can talk about, you know, follow your instinct is with motherhood, right? To an extent again, okay? And with motherhood, it is more about your experience with your child. You know your child. You live with that child. You raise that child. That is why you can rely on your instincts in such cases. To an extent, again, like I said, because for instance, I might see Cora scratching her eyes and to me, I feel like, oh, she's just scratching her eyes. I might not know that she has an allergy, okay? Maybe over time, when I now realize that, oh, she's scratching her eyes too much or it's not getting bad. Maybe when I now see allergy, I'll be like, oh, this is an allergy, okay? So it's not in all cases that your instinct will actually be right with your children. People might actually tell you, oh, I had a child that was itching her eyes like this. She actually has an allergy, okay? I mean, listen to people's advice. You don't have to take it, but at least listen to people's advice, okay? And again, as a mom, it's good for me to follow my instinct with my children, not with children in general because there have been cases where I will touch a child and I feel like this child's, this child's body feels normal and then the mother will come and touch the child and I feel like, no, this child's temperature is actually high and I'm like, fever wear, like temperature high wear, she, she feels normal to me. But the mother is right because she knows her child. The same thing with when I say, oh, Cora's temperature is high and someone's like, no, she's not, someone else can touch her and be like, even sometimes even her father will touch her and say, no, she's normal and I'm like, no. I can tell that this child's temperature is high and then we'll go and bring her mommy and we'll find out that her temperature is actually higher than normal, okay? So I can rely on my instincts with my own child, not with children in general, okay? Anyway, yeah, so those are cases, a few cases where follow your instinct is a good advice. But basically, all I'm trying to say is that it's okay to follow your instincts, but also be aware that your instincts might not always be correct and that is where you rely on other people you rely on the holy spirit you rely on experience you rely on you know questioning things seeking good advice you know learning okay there is a place for understanding how things work 
so that you can now rely on your instinct moving forward. I hope that makes sense. I hope it does. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that's it guys. Those are the popular advice that personally, I don't really think that we have to follow hook, line and sinker. Okay. I feel like some of those advice are outdated. I feel like some of them are useless and even counterproductive. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes they're actually the opposite of what you should do. So be very careful. Okay. Question things. Like I said, let me know in the comment section if you agree with me. Let me also know if you disagree with me. And if you disagree with me, let me know what exactly you disagree with me on. Okay. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.